Uh, so the question is, does owning a Russia ETF mean that investors have quote unquote ties to Russia? This was a claim that was made by a recent article in the Guardian newspaper. Joining me from Princeton to discuss is Eric Balchunas. He's senior ETF analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence. It's almost sort of a socially conscious investing question, right? That if you invest in a Russia ETF, are you somehow condoning the political actions of Russia. So, I mean, is that the argument The Guardian was making, Eric? And does that, I mean, what kind of validity does that have? Well, there's some validity. About 20% of the Russia ETF hold sanctioned companies. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you don't want to be invested in that, avoid RSX. However, a few things I thought were mischaracterized. The headline basically says this congressman, Greg, uh, Greg Gianforte, uh, basically has ties to Russia. And if you look at the portfolio and the congressman's holdings, though, context is important here. Uh, basically, RSX and ERUS, two Russia ETFs he held, accounted for only 1% of his financial disclosure and 0.1% of his net worth. And they were part of, I think, an emerging market strategy because he also held single country ETFs for Indonesia, India, Poland. So clearly there was an emerging market macro strategy going on. And in addition, if you look at who else holds the Russia ETF, uh, you've got big state pensions like New Jersey, New York, and Ohio. You've got insurance companies, and they hold 100, 200 times what this congressman held. So I think that context is important here. And I got to give cre credit to Eric Mustin, who is a ex uh, ETF market maker, who wrote a blog post identifying this because we all know that that Montana congressman made some news by uh, getting into an altercation with this reporter. However, nobody really sought to de deconstruct this article, and I thought that article, it's on medium.com, did a good job of doing that, and I think they made a good point. Uh, and I'm curious, Eric, uh, was the original Guardian post, I mean, has this been a topic of discussion before in the ETF community, whether it's about Russia or other ETFs that maybe have politically controversial holdings? No, this has never been done before. That's why I think it's worth pointing out because there's a lot of people who might want to own Russia. The goal is to make money, right, for investing, right? Now, part of it, you could be, you could avoid certain things if you don't want to invest in them. There's a good example, the state of uh, Tennessee. That's a pension that purposely uses single country ETFs in the emerging markets to avoid Russia and China. So you could use single country ETFs either to go long Russia or short it or avoid it. So the point is, though, these are just vehicles to be used, but the, the allocation is so small that I think it's important to note uh, that it's not really meaning you have ties to Russia. Right. But on the other hand, you could avoid it if you don't want to have anything to do with it. So let's get to the smart beta uh, part of the segment. Um, you say that uh, the RSX, the, that, that ETF, is kind of a stealth smart beta ETF. Uh, how is that? Yeah, RSX was the first to market. Everybody knows it, but people don't understand. It's actually got a unique weighting methodology, a screening process. Because a lot of tech companies in Russia primarily list in the US, uh, they aren't in the MSCI index. So RSX doesn't track that. It includes tech companies that are listed here and has 6% tech. That means its energy exposure comes down to about 38%, whereas ERUS, which tracks MSCI, is 50% energy. Huge difference, and it will definitely dictate the return. So it's something to investors should note. But normally, the smart beta one isn't the first to market. But in this case, it was. And it looks like, uh, just looking at the year-to-date chart of the two, I, I mean, they do track still relatively closely together, right? Pretty close. But this year, I think one's up 4% over the other one. But the, the, the point is that energy in particular, obviously, that makes ERUS much more exposed to what's going on in the oil market. Right. With RSX, you have a little less, although 38% is still a lot.